The Gaming Plus is MSI's entry level for gamers. It's supposed to be affordably powerful and packed with features. And I had, I got a lot of steam uh, for the negative review I've given to its X570 version. A lot. But worry not because uh, MSI has carefully listened to my critics and took the occasion of the latest um, MPG B550 Gaming Plus to correct all their wrongs. I'm just kidding. It's chip to chip, the very same mess of a board than its X570 version. An overly dressed motherboard trying to hide its inefficiency behind layers of tech makeup, camouflaging its stench of a design under the heavy caustic smell of cheap perfume. And I should know something about makeup and cheap perfume. I am French and, and I have a past. The Gaming Plus is MSI's attempt to snatch the maximum amount of gamers by proposing heavy specs to a very light price. And I think, great, I love the premise. And the B550 chipset should do nothing but help MSI in its very noble adventure. And it all started so well, because all of the B550 MSI boards I've reviewed are amazing. Well, to be fair, I only reviewed the Tomahawk, but one of the best B550 motherboards on the market today. And if you haven't done so yet, you should check my review. But truth be told, with the Gaming Plus, MSI has tried to cut too many corners, so to propose it at a lower budget price tag at about $150 to $160, which by the way is not that low. And when I say cutting corners, they really, really chipped on the very foundation and the engineering of this board, which shows at every turn of the review. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a four PCB layered ATX motherboard. And right there, this is a very first uh, engineering mistake done by MSI. The number of your board PCB layers impact your motherboard in many different ways. It's durability, stability, and even it's audio quality. Too few layers and your VRM will boil its soldering points with temperatures well above 100 degrees Celsius, which obviously reduces its lifespan and can cause severe thermal throttling. It also means a poor PCB tracing isolation, which on a PCIe 4 enabled board is a big no-no. No, 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 no. In short, if you are buying a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard, make sure that it has at least six PCB sheets, PCB uh, layers, not four. CPU socket wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting third and fifth generation of Ryzen CPU. In other words, PCIe 4.0 only CPUs, uh, which is important because this is where our board PCIe 4 uh, abilities will come from. VRM wise, well, MSI gave somewhat of a good value here. We got 12 50 amps low and high end power stages. That is 600 amps in total, 500 of which are CPU centric, obviously more than enough to run and comfortably overclock whatever Ryzen processor is on the market today, yes. But I have a couple of remarks here. First, we're dealing with a cheaper low end, high end power stages configuration, which means less heat efficiency, it is less agile, and and not as good as overclocking as in a fully integrated power stage. But given the price, I can understand that. But most importantly, since we're dealing with only four PCB layers, every time you will try to push your VRM, you will hit the solder points to 120, 130 degrees Celsius, which is absolutely, absolutely not acceptable. With this kind of thermal nuclear Chernobylian temperatures, your board will not only heavily, severely thermal throttle your processor every time you try to push it, but it will also reduce uh, its lifespan. And it is a problem not everybody is aware because when you look at the top VRM temps themselves, they're not that high. It's only at the soldered point that all these temps accumulate and can be so dangerous. So pragmatically, what it means for you is that this board can <clears throat> run and even overclock mid-range processors, such as four and six physical core board. For anything beefier than that, it will be thermal throttled right away. And so what MSI really needs to do to fix this issue is to provide us with six PCB layers motherboard. And so for the next iteration of the MSI, uh, whatever gaming plus, either uh, 
MSI I'm talking to you, you release six PCB layers or you release nothing at all. Memory wise, the MPG B550 Gaming Plus supports up to 128GB of DDR4 RAM in a dual channel configuration, clocking up to a respectful 4.4GHz. Now, note that these kind of speeds are only achievable on single stick configuration. If you had a second, third and fourth, uh, the speeds will incrementally decrease all the way down to 3.6 GHz, which is actually quite good. But if you want to achieve 4.4 GHz, I'd go for a higher density RAM stick such as 16 or 32 GB of DDR4 RAM. Now, taking a closer look to our B550 chipset. Since our CPU takes care of the PCIe 4.0 heavy lifting to feed our most performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain PCIe 3 without slowing down your build. It also means that our chipset is much cooler, 6 watt instead of 11, so no more need for a fan to keep it cool as seen on its X570 counterpart. As a result, we got PCIe 4.0 enabled uh, on the most important components of our board, namely the 16 PCIe lane, GPU slot and uh, M.2 solid state drive. And in the same time, keeping the manufacturing costs down since we do not need an active cooling solution. A well-balanced act if I've ever seen one Mi sombreros. Staying in the memory, we have two M.2 solid state drive sticks which can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second. But since our CPU fed M.2 solid state drive supports PCIe 4.0 standard, it can run up to a whopping 64 gigabit per second, which obviously is great for a boot drive. Now, that last one will unmistakably go harder than its PCIe 3 neighbor, but luckily we have this thick thermo padded heat shield, which does a great job at keeping it from throttling. Definitely a good point for MSI and somewhat of a luxury feature here. Staying in the storage, worth mentioning the presence of our usual somewhat obsolete but reliable 6 SATA 3.0 plugs, which can transfer data to a bottlenecking 6 gigabit per second. I'm not a big fan of SATA 3.0, it's been around for 10 years, I still wonder why we don't have a better standard than that at that level, but it's here, it's reliable, I'm behaving fine. Export wise, we have four PCIe exports, two bachelors, because, well, they're single speed and <laughs> single slot, and two 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes. Therefore, this is where you obviously want your video card installed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second 16 slot is capped at only for PCIe lanes at PCIe 3.0 standards are not really suited for GPU intensive tasks. And this is what I was expecting from a budget gamer motherboard, so we have no problem. But I have to note that despite the fact that having 16 lanes at PCIe 4 standard is twice the speed of PCIe 3, so we have 32 gigabyte per second instead of 16 gigabyte per second of bandwidth, you will not notice any kind of gaming performance increase even with the latest RTX uh, 30 series from NVIDIA or the RT6000 series from AMD. So the only good thing it does bring to your build is future proofing, right? Uh, or, or multi or better multiple GPU support and beefier motherboards. But right now it's most likely uh, to bring you some uh, solid future proofing for the years to come. Back IO-wise, first let me know the presence of a padded back IO plate, which is rather a premium and welcome feature. Now starting from the left, we have a CPU flashback button for CPU-less BIOS recovery update, which I like. A PS2 connector, which I really don't enjoy to see anymore. I mean, you can find like weird people who's gonna go for PS2 connector, but whatever. I would prefer to see more USB plugs on any PS2 connector equipped motherboard today. So yeah, for next time. Next, we have four USB second generation, two display outputs for Vega integrated graphics, two five gigabit third generation USB plugs, two 10 gigabit USB plugs, including a Type-C, a gigabit LAN, which is flat out disappointing because all of the other B550 powered MSI motherboard uh, to the extent exception of the mortar, I think, have all been equipped with 2.5 gigabit uh, LAN uh, plugs. And, and, and so and actually, if you go on the C490, everything, the whole industry is going toward 2.5 gigabit LAN after 10 years of vegetative one gigabit LAN. So um, yeah, talking of saving the price, remove the HDMI, uh, remove the PS2, 
and uh, yeah, invest in a 2.5 gigabit LAN would have made much more sense to us and MSI if I may dare say so myself. And finally, we got our mid-range 8-channel ALC892 audio codec, which is so hard to say, um, and which could have been great. It could have been good even though it's a mid-range, but because it is only a 4 PCB layers, and despite the fact that both left and right audio channel have been traced on dedicated uh, PCB sheets, it's not great. I'm not sure my sentence make a lot of sense. It's just not great. It, it is prone to uh, static interferences. There's not enough PCB layers to protect it and isolate it enough from poorly grounded houses such as mine. So if you're looking for real good audio quality in gaming, that won't necessarily do the job. Uh, you might want to invest on a dedicated audio solution, I'm afraid to say. So all and for all, if I had to redo this back iOS, like I said earlier, I would have removed the PS2, add a couple of USB plugs, remove the HDMI, and instead uh, invest in a 2.5 gigabit LAN. So it could have been better. And what's really annoying is that it could have been better for no extra cost. Moving on to our front panel connectors, we have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring, a single five gigabit, third generation plug and a 10 gigabit type C front panel connector, which is pure luxury coming from a B. See all that sweat, am I sweating? Can you see the sweat? Cooling wise, we have eight PWM fans, including a single dedicated water pump. And obviously this is more than enough to provide solid airflow to any build, but I cannot shake that feeling that MSI has again missed uh, an opportunity to save some money uh, uh, in to the profit of some more essential features because it is simply too much. I would have been happier with five hybrid connectors such as seen on gigabyte motherboards which will be which would have been able to support not only uh, PWM fans but also water pumps, flow sensors, what have you than eight dedicated PWM fans really and that extra cost could have gone on i don't know maybe add six pcb layers to that motherboard say now troubleshooting wise we get our easy debugger to guide us through the booting process which is what i expected from a pcie 4.0 enabled budget gamer but we also have this flash bias button on the back so we're in the clear on this one it's rather even luxurious which is Okay, happy I guess? I'm happy? Finally, this would not have been a gamer motherboard without the abundant RGB goodness which makes our lives so much more meaningful. Starting with a single RGB strip hidden under our chipset heat shield and three RGB connectors scattered all over our board including two addressable ones. In short, if your streaming career never really took off, you can still use your motherboard RGB abilities to open an Asian tanning saloon. Now, in conclusion, at $160, the MSI MPG B550 Gaming Plus is about $10 cheaper than its X570 predecessor. Now, where to start? The Gaming Plus goal was to reach a maximum amount of gamer with an affordable price. And that's a great goal. You know, it, it, on paper, spec-wise, feature-wise, it looks great. And it's a good-looking motherboard. And coming from a renowned company like MSI, who've produced probably some of the best motherboard I've reviewed, the Unify and the Tomahawk, what could go wrong? What could go wrong? Truth is, MSI has done some serious cuts where it shouldn't have cuts, uh, especially in the engineering section. Just the simple fact of not having a 6 PCB layered board really affects all the value and all the, the, the quality and the performance ability of this motherboard. Like I said, affects the, 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 the durability, the stability, the audio quality. All that would make this motherboard a solid competing um, gamer option on the market today. And at the end of the day, if you're gonna uh, uh, have to spend more money on a dedicated audio solution and, and going to go around trying to fix this board in your build, you're better off spending $50 more, 50 bucks more, and just go straight to the B550 Tomahawk, which I have reviewed not so long ago, and you should be checking if you haven't done so, because this is a board you actually want when buying the Gaming Plus. Ah, 